Day one of winter meetings is in the books, and the Tigers weren't silent. Wouldn't call them active, but they weren't silent either. Let's talk about it all today on Locked On Tigers. You are Locked On Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Tuesday, December 5th, 2023. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. Also, be sure to check out the SiriusXM app. You can just search any team. And in the SiriusXM app, immediately listen to their home radio broadcast if they're playing a game. It's an awesome feature and an awesome app. So be sure to check out the SiriusXM app today. All right. Well, I apologize to the Midnight Crew for starters, my uh, my, my my faves there um, that always make their uh, their presence known. Uh, I This is going to come probably an hour or maybe a little bit more after midnight just because I'm recording after the Monday Night Football game. Figured that was enough. You know, I, I'm really like terrified this whole week of recording an episode early and then having a big move happen after. So I'm playing it super safe. So the episodes might be 30 minutes to an hour after midnight, depending on the day throughout this week. Uh, next week, we will go down to three episodes a week, but for winter meetings, we will certainly still be at five as well. The Tigers, like I said, they weren't silent, okay? I, I Far from active, not going to try to convince you that they did anything crazy, but a lot of smaller behind-the-scenes type of things came out on Monday afternoon. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Jim Leland a little bit more. He was asked, you know, he had his press conference getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. We will talk about some of the front office stuff that the Tigers have done, some of the coaching stuff the Tigers have done. Their finalized coaching staff is here. We'll read that off to you. The Tigers extended A.J. Hinch. We'll talk all about that. We'll talk about the draft lottery, which is happening on Tuesday. What you need to know as that happens, Eduardo Rodriguez was spotted in Nashville. He's meeting with teams. And then we'll talk about a few KBO players, one specifically. That uh, has been posted as well. You know, the, the Japanese players are getting all of the limelight, rightfully so. They're very talented pitchers, uh, but the uh, the KBO MVP is being posted as well. So we'll talk about him a little bit at the end. Let's get right into it, okay? Three minutes in, let's get right into it. Uh, Jim Leland, officially a Hall of Famer. We talked about that on yesterday's show. He received 15 of 16 votes uh, to get him into the Hall of Fame the only thing I really want to bring up, again, we talked about it a lot more in depth yesterday. Awesome dude. Very well deserving. I do want to give a shout out. I do think somebody said it in the comments as well, and I don't think I brought it up yesterday, and I, I wholeheartedly agree. Lou Pinella was a vote short, and I wholeheartedly agree that Lou Pinella should be in the Hall of Fame as well. Uh, I made uh, talked a little bit about Lou Whitaker on yesterday's show and how as much as I love Jim Leland and he 100% deserves to be in, if Jim Leland's in the Hall of Fame, Lou Whitaker should be in the Hall of Fame. Lou Pinella should be in the Hall of Fame as well. All right. He, he, again, I said it yesterday. You can't tell the story of baseball without talking about Jim Leland. We sure as heck can't uh, tell the story of baseball without bringing up Lou Pinella either, in my opinion. So that's uh, something. But Jim Leland, Hall of Famer, more than deserving. Uh, every single player he's ever played for respects the heck out of him. There's even that video that I, I posted it even when uh, – he officially got inducted of uh, of Leland just absolutely tearing into Barry Bonds coming off of an MVP uh, in Pittsburgh for like a minute straight. And Barry Bonds was like the most vocal and first person to congratulate Jim Leland when he got inducted into the Hall of Fame and said that he was his favorite manager he ever played for, and said that you know he he was such a great baseball mind, and that he respected him so much. And the two of them still to this day are unbelievably close. Uh, so it, it's just you know the, he had a quote. MLB Network interviewed him about you know just how what it means to be a good manager and how he was a good manager. And one of his quotes, I'm I'm kind of butchering it a little bit. I'll paraphrase slightly, but it was essentially you know if you tell the truth to a player, they get mad at you for 24 hours. If you lie or maybe aren't straightforward and you lead them in the wrong way, they'll never forgive you. 
And I just think that that was like the epitome of Jim Leland's managerial career. Like you, you might've hated him for a day and he was going to let you know how he felt and he was going to rile the boys up and, and, and he was going to really, really be very straightforward with his players. But there is not a player that has ever played for Jim Leland didn't love him to death. And uh, I, I think that that, that matters. And uh, certainly the success and the amount of wins that comes with Jim Leland as well, the ring in Florida, more than deserving. Uh, the one thing I want to bring up outside of everything I already have brought up, I guess, is the fact that Jim Leland was asked about what hat he would be wearing in the Hall of Fame. Sounds like there's two options here. It's either an old English D or it's an MLB logo. Does not sound like he wants to go any other direction. Does not sound like it will be any other direction. Now, these days, it's not 100% the player's decision, which is a super common misconception. Uh, there, like the Hall of Fame has people that like help determine what logo you wear. Uh, like it is not just 100% the player's decision, which is like kind of wild, uh, or the manager's decision in this case. Um, but that is like how it works. Like there is uh, partly to do with like the player or the, or the person getting elected. And also there's like people that that is not solely their job, but the, they're part of the decision-making process there. So uh, it, it doesn't sound like he'll go in on like a Pirates hat or anything, or certainly not a Marlins hat, even though that is his one World Series, just didn't spend enough time there. Um, but uh, it, it, it does sound like there is a chance that it might just be an MLB logo. But if it's not an MLB logo, it sounds like it'll be an old English date. So that, I just wanted to throw that out there. Seems like those are the two options there. Um, let's move on to the actual moves that were made. Oh my goodness. Sorry. I, I just like, I get notifications as I'm, as I'm, I'm recording and I want to be up to date with everything and I don't want to miss everything. So I'm checking. Apparently the Blue Jays met with Otani on Monday, but didn't Otani's camp say they didn't want like any meetings to leak? I don't know who even knows anymore. That's wild though. Good for the Blue Jays. Uh, it's weird though. There was a report that if they got Otani, that means they would want to trade Bichette and Vlad. That seems counterintuitive to me, but this is not locked on Blue Jays. That show is a fantastic show that we're going to cross over with him a few times. Um, so the uh, well, we'll start with the front office. Okay. Uh, Can Aikida, I believe is the pronunciation who uh, worked for Team Japan and won a gold medal in the World Baseball Classic working for Team Japan, is joining the Tigers' front office after several years in the advanced scouting department. That report, word for word, is from Evan Petzold of The Freep, who we give credit to all the time. Great uh, beat writer for this town. Um, and yeah, I, 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 Evan says that he saw him at winter meetings and said that he's really excited about the new role. Evan has a whole article about it where he goes more in depth than we're going to. Um, but this is just a continuation of the the pipeline that Scott Harris really wants to build to uh, Japan. And he really wants the Tigers to be an actual legitimate destination for Japanese players that come over from the NPB. And that is awesome. Uh, only time will tell if it works, right? It's one thing to, to put everything in place and to want a pipeline. It's another thing to actually execute that plan and, and have, you know, Japanese players sign with the Tigers over the next, you know, 5, 10, hopefully for the rest of time, right? Um, but uh, I, I think that this is just like another really big, and again, familiar with the organization, um, advanced scouting department guy, like certainly knows the players over there very well. And uh, I, I think that this is like, this can only lead to good things. I, I, I can't find any reason to not be pleased with this move. And it 100% backs up the continuous claims and, and just evidence by this front office of we want to be more serious players in the Japanese player market. And I, I think that that's awesome. And, and who knows if it'll come to fruition this year, right? Everybody, everybody obviously has been talking about Yamamoto. I don't think that's realistic. Imanaga, I think is much more realistic, right? Like there's, the, everybody wants it to happen this year. But even if we lay the groundwork and now we miss out on those guys and we're all disappointed and we're sad and we're coming on here with a sad episode, even, you know, down the road, even, even like a year from now, if we're getting like the next wave of Japanese players that comes over from the MPB, if we're at least in those conversations, if we're a finalist for those guys, that is still this working. This is a long-term thing. He's not doing all this just for Imanaga and that's it. It's very important to remember, like this is this is groundwork that hopefully will, will help the Tigers for years and years and years down the road. And I think that that's super exciting. Also, 
like not to just short change like can as a as an individual either like this isn't just a move where it's just purely oh well we just want to like help the pipeline here and he's going to provide nothing else to the organization no again advanced scouting department he is going to i would imagine uh have a lot of say in the prospects that are coming over and that do get posted every single year he's probably going to be the one of the biggest voices in the room for a lot of japanese players that are posted uh, within the Tigers front office going forward. And, and his opinion on them, I would imagine, will hold a lot of weight. So awesome move, really cool stuff. The Tigers continue to to head in that direction. I think that that's a beautiful thing. And yeah, congratulations to uh, to Ken Aikido, one of the newest members of the Tigers front office. So um, let's move on and talk about the coaching staff. We got a finalized coaching staff list. Then we're obviously going to talk about the A.J. Hinch extension. We will do that right after. I tell y'all about our friends over at Jace Medical. We talk about Jace Medical all the time on this show because whether you're on extended travel or bracing for a major weather event or limited by yet another supply shortage, you are covered, my friend. Thanks to our partners at Jace Medical, life-saving antibiotics and a long list of daily medications can be ordered in one-year supply, even ED generics for Cialis or Viagra. Jace Medical has the Jace case. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics that treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinus infections, skin infections, Amongst others, this stuff could happen to any of us. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. A fraction of it. That is a, a huge thing with Jace Medical is making these available to everybody. And it's never been more important to be prepared than today. So go to jacemedical.com and you all use offer code LOCKDOWN, all one word, to get $20 off of your order. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked On Tigers. Appreciate you all for tuning in, making us your first listen every day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. I appreciate you all greatly. We will obviously be back tomorrow talking about Day three, I I don't, I always, I never know whether to include Sunday as day one or whether Monday's day one, but another day of winter meetings in the books tomorrow. We will obviously review all the news and notes happening on tomorrow's show as well. Uh, and today's show, obviously a big thing, probably the biggest thing to come out of the Tigers organization on Monday was the extension of AJ Hinch. And even before the extension of AJ Hinch, there was uh, a the finalized list of the coaching staff for the season. And I think that that is uh, something we've been talking about that all off season, right? How they've needed base coaches. They obviously lost one of their assistant hitting coaches, et cetera. And so the Tigers have a finalized list, obviously with AJ Hinch at the top and the usual suspects, George Lombard being back again, I think is nothing short of a miracle. Uh, I will continue Let's just talk about that for two seconds. I, I will continue to say George Lombard is one of the, the, the best baseball minds out there, and I genuinely believe he could become a manager at any moment. And I've believed that since he joined this staff, what, two, three years ago. Um, I, I am, I'm blown away that he's still here, and I'm going to enjoy every second of it because I, I promise you this dude will be a manager at some point. I, I promise. He was a finalist for the Tigers job before the White Sox just randomly didn't go after A.J. Hinch and went after TLR instead. So uh, I, I am very grateful that he's still here as well. Uh, and then obviously the, the usual suspects on the pitching side, Feder Lund, Nieves, that we give so much credit to all the time. The new faces, assistant hitting coach Lance Zawadski, first base coach Anthony Iapoche, third base coach Joey Cora, and catching coach Ryan Sienko. Those are the four new coaches, and that seems to be your finalized list here. Um, first base coach Anthony Iapoche was the uh, Toledo Mudhens manager last year, so he is an internal hire. Uh, there was some conversations about who internally was going to get promoted, if anybody. It appears to be uh, Anthony here. So congratulations to him. He will be the first base coach. Joey Cora will be the third base coach. 
Um, we already talked about there's been some shuffling around as well. Jones is just moving to a bench coach role, not leaving the organization. Uh, Joey Cora was hired a few weeks ago. We talked about that when it happened. Ryan Sienko and uh, Lance Zawadski, goodness, uh, are the two outside hires uh, within the organization. Now, um, Zawadski comes from the Boston Red Sox organization. So, there you go. Don't have too much else to add. Hard to kind of quantify and, and value coaches until we see them in practice. But those are the newest members of the coaching staff. And those added to what was already in place will be presumably your 2024 Detroit Tigers coaching staff. I still think it, I and we'll talk about that. It's a transition here. A.J. Hinch obviously extended on Monday. I genuinely think that we went from just a bottom of the barrel. And this is not any shade at Ron Gardenhire. He's a fantastic baseball mind. And, and I think he was really just brought in to, to kind of be the captain of a rudderless ship and just was asked to lose games. I don't think that like Gardy is an awful manager. He obviously had a lot of success in Minnesota. But I think we went from a coaching staff with really no real – direction and, and was probably considered to be uh, the pitching side of things. Again, we don't have to name names or anything, but the pitching coach upgrade we have cannot be like undersold or understated whatsoever. Uh, and, and just the complete tear down and rebuild up of this coaching staff, I think has left us in significantly better shoes than we were before AJ Hinge came on board. And I genuinely think we have, you know, I'm not going to say that we have like the number one coaching staff in baseball or anything like that. But I do think that we have one of the better ones. And I genuinely have believed that for the better part of three years now and, uh, or four years for Guardy was done. Yeah. Four years, three, Th goodness, three. Yeah. Three. This will be we're, we're next year will be four. So, I can't say enough good things about this coaching staff that has been assembled, that AJ has been obviously the leader in bringing in all these guys. Um, and, and with the Hinch extension, a couple of things to note here. Uh, one is that uh, while he was on Foul Territory, the, the podcast with a bunch of really cool former MLB players, uh, you can go listen to that interview on their channel. Um, and they just straight up asked him, I don't know if they had been like fed beforehand that he was about to get, they were about to announce the extension or whatnot, but they had just asked him a day before the extension was announced. Uh, if you know, he planned on being how long he planned on being the Tigers manager or whatever. And he like, it's the most confidence, confident I've ever seen an answer to that question in like any capacity in sports. Like most guys, you know, players, coaches, GMs, anybody just kind of gives you like the GM speak stuff of like, oh, well, you know, I want to, but we'll see. He just straight up like deadpan. He was like a long time. Like I'm going to be here a while. And everybody was like, oh, that, that's some confidence. And then sure enough is because 24 hours later they announced. So we don't have the exact terms. We don't know the salary. That's a pretty common practice, especially in baseball to not really talk about the terms of the manager or general manager too publicly. Um, but for years, we don't have an exact number, but his current contract was in place through 2025. And he got an extension on that. So he was already guaranteed to be here at least two more years. And he got reportedly a pretty hefty extension. Like there, there's a chance that this is like beyond like five years from now um, is the, how long this extension runs through couple of important things I want to say that Scott Harris said. Uh, one Something that really jumped out to me was uh, Cody Stavenhagen reported this one, was that um, Harris approached Hinch about an extension the day after the season ended. And one of the reasons why is because Harris wanted to make sure Hinch didn't feel as though he was a quote-unquote inherited manager. Um, and then he said, we're, the quote from Sagan Hagen was, we are pumped that AJ is going to be the manager of the Tigers for a long time. So uh, I think that that does mean something. I think that it is meaningful to make sure that your manager doesn't feel like an inherited manager. Um, but I've been pretty vocal about the fact that I think AJ Hinch is one of the better managers in the game of baseball. I know everybody has a, has a different opinion on him. Obviously, he has the checkered past with the cheating thing. That's never going to leave him. Some people are just going to hate him forever because of it. Uh, so be it. I, I'm not here to tell you how to feel. I'm just here to tell you how I feel. And uh, I, I'm I'm pumped. I, I'm through the roof about this. I, I think AJ Hinch is the type of manager where if the Detroit Tigers 
were to let him go tomorrow, right? If they were like, oh, just kidding, this extension was fake and we're firing him actually. I genuinely think over 20 teams would legitimately have a conversation of, do we fire our guy for AJ Hinch? I think that that easily two thirds of the league, if not more, to be honest, would consider firing who they have in charge to bring in AJ. Uh, and even just like on the field, I know we talk about the, uh, maybe the overzealousness of uh, the, the platoon situation that he does. And there's some game to game stuff that uh, like, I, I don't, I don't sugarcoat anything when it comes to like how I feel about how the game's played on the field. And uh, you know, certainly I, we've butted heads uh, on some of the decisions that he's made throughout the year. I will obviously continue to like be vocal when I do disagree with that, but I, I just, I can't undersell how important he has been to the revital revitalization of this organization. There's a lot of shown words there. Uh, but I, I like, again, he he came in and not only completely replenished the major league coaching staff to be one of the better coaching staffs in baseball, but completely the, the, the minor league system got a complete overhaul when AJ came in as well. And he brought in more analytically inclined people. The Detroit Tigers went from archaic in terms of analytics and it wasn't when Scott Harris came in. It was when A.J. Hinch came in that that got reju rejuvenated and, and, and that the Tigers really took big steps forward in that department. He had a say in bringing in Scott Harris. Um, if, you know, again, like, and I, I'm okay with that. And again, I know some people aren't, and not everybody is like the biggest rah-rah number one fan of his. And the fact that he has his fingerprints all over this organization uh, may may not be music to some people's ears, uh, but for me, I, I'm thrilled about this. And uh, I think that it's also important just for culture, even if you're the biggest AJ Hinge hater on the planet, I think it's important for culture to continue to, to, to have any player that comes in, any prospect that gets called up, anybody, any coach that gets hired to know we have a, a name stay. There is somebody that is, is here and he's going to be here, and he has been here, and that's not changing. I think that stability and confidence in stability is also very important, especially in the game of baseball. So uh, I can't say enough good things about it. it. You know, obviously no coaching staff, no manager is perfect. I'm not here saying he's the greatest of all time or anything like that, but I, I really do. I, I am a big fan of, of giving him a massive contract extension so that uh, he is going to be here for a long time. Two thumbs up from me. All right, let's keep the ball rolling. We got to talk about the draft lottery. We got to talk about Eduardo Rodriguez, who is at Nashville Winter Meetings. And then we'll talk about uh, one player in particular, but uh, uh, the, the KBO postings as well. We'll talk about that right after this. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Third and final segment of Locked On Tigers. I appreciate you all for tuning in as always. So we've talked about A.J. Hinch. We've talked about the coaching staff. I think that's everything. I, I think I've said my piece and everything there. Like I said, two thumbs up. Thrilled about it. Um, let's talk about the draft lottery. Let me get the exact odds up so I can be uh, completely accurate about this. Um, so the MLB draft lottery will be held on Tuesday which is something that is new to baseball and is, wow, they have, here we go. Uh, it's something that's new. The new collective bargaining agreement had, uh, well, it's not new this year. It was new last year, but it's still new to a lot of people. This is only year two of the lottery. Now, last year, if you remember, the Tigers moved up in the lottery. Uh, the Tigers had the third overall pick in the draft last year. They were not supposed to. Uh, right? Or was it third or fourth? I'm already forgetting. Third, right? Yeah, because Clark and Langford was still on the board. So uh, the, the Tigers moved up last year. We're not supposed to have the third overall pick, but and now the uh, the top three picks specifically will uh, are all kind of up for grabs. So uh, the current top three teams who are all tied for the highest odds are the Oakland A's, who had a historically awful season, the Kansas City Royals, who don't give uh, get enough crap, in my opinion, for being like almost as bad as the Oakland A's, and then the Colorado Rockies, who just have – I mean, we want to talk about, you know, no matter if you disagree with everything I've said about the front office and the coaching staff this episode or, or you completely agree with it, we can all agree that at least we're better off than the Rockies' front office. That, that 
organization, my goodness, I, I, I feel for those fans. They have the, one of the most beautiful ballparks in the league. They, they've, they've had a ton of talent in the past. They are in a launching pad of a stadium, and, and they have a front office that still thinks it's – I don't even know. I, I, I was going to pick a year and just pick a long time ago, but I don't even think that really covers it. Like they, they, they just are, are in complete disarray all the time, and uh, that's sad. Or at least the last like – Five years. Um, so those three are at the top. The White Sox right behind them at 14.7%. A lot of AL Central representation here, I'm realizing. Uh, the Cardinals then, who had a – the first time the Cardinals have gone, gone under 500 in a very long time, have an 8.3% chance. The Angels at 6.1%. The Mets at 43 The Pirates at 3 uh, The Guardians at 2 and then your Detroit Tigers at 1.6%, followed by the Red Sox, uh, Giants, Reds, Padres, Yankees, Cubs, Mariners, and the technically the Washington Nationals, um, although they are ineligible for a lottery pick, it says. So uh, everybody else there, Red Sox through Mariners, all 1.2% to 0.2%. So the Tigers had a 1.6% chance. I'm not expecting to move whatsoever. Uh, we're all going to hold our breath and hope, as we always do in lottery sports. Um, but just in general, Detroit sports, not to play the, like the victim card with the, oh, like we always move back in the lottery, but it's kind of objectively true. So um, like we have Cade and, and for the Pistons, and that's great. Outside of that, uh, it, it's been like 30 years of every lottery sport. Detroit just like pretty continuously – not moving up. Uh, so I'm not expecting a lot 1.6 either. I'm not going to cry about not moving up for with only a 1.6% chance. I think it's pretty safe to say the Tigers will be picking, what is that, 11? 10, 11? Uh, so yeah, uh, again, 1.6%, probably not going to happen. Uh, but those are your odds. We will see. I'm assuming there will be some movement probably in the top. Man, there's a chance. Goodness, yeah. Of the 11 worst records in baseball, four were in the AL Central. And the Twins are cutting payroll. Scott Harris, you got this, <laughs> okay? No one else in this division is really trying. Go be somebody, all right? Um, so there you go, lottery. Like I said, we'll bring it up tomorrow. We'll talk about where they land. Uh, we are not going to start draft coverage, please. I, I, <laughs> it, it's so early. And like, we can talk about prospects if you really, really wanted to, the draft prospects. But like, the guy who we think is going to go, you know, like 11th overall now is going to be a third round pick by June or is going to be like the number one overall pick by June. Like, there's, there's an entire season left to play in this sport. Like we're not going to start like mocking drafts or anything, but we'll talk about the placement, what it could mean for the Tigers. Erod, really quickly, there's no update here. There's no like, oh my goodness, Erod is, you know, like meeting with this team and this team. But he is in Nashville and he is meeting with a lot of teams. And it's been reported by multiple people that he is meeting with a lot of teams. A couple of them very late on Monday night, uh, apparently. So we will see what happens with that. I do not expect to be the Tigers to be players in the Erod sweepstakes really whatsoever. Uh, I've been wrong plenty. I'll be wrong again. I say that all the time. But uh, based on what, what I've seen and heard, I, I really don't. I, I, think, I don't think the Tigers want to right a wrong with potentially another wrong. And that's, again, I've sung the praise of Erod the pitcher multiple times. This is not a, like a derogatory thing towards him on the mound whatsoever. But I don't think that Harris wants to look at the fumbling of the trade deadline and go, you know what? We need to make up for that by just giving him like $24 million a year so that he's here because I didn't get anything for him at the deadline. Uh, two wrongs don't make a right. I think they're probably going to let him walk especially if that AAV starts getting into the 20s. I don't think the Tigers are going to be too terribly interested. Okay, um, that's the impression I get, but we'll see what happens throughout the week. And lastly, I do want to bring up that, uh, you know, we, we've talked a lot, as I've said, about the Japanese players that are coming over, the, the two pitchers specifically. Um, but uh, there's also some KBO players that are getting posted and I, I bring this up just for news sake, not really necessarily that the Tigers are going to be players, 
for him. Um, but uh, Jung Hu Lee is a center fielder and is like one of, if not the best player in the KBO over the last couple of years. Uh, he played for the Heroes, which uh, if you are as much of a baseball fiend as I am, uh, during the COVID lockdown, when the KBO was the only baseball on the globe that was being played, you all picked a, a KBO team to follow and stay up until 4 a.m., and watch every night. Uh, the heroes were not my team. I was an LG Twins fan. Shout out to all my LG Twins fans out there. Um, but uh, Lee played for the heroes, and he was phenomenal. He was uh, st- really doesn't even do it justice. He's an on-base percentage machine, uh, which is something that uh, originally a lot of people were like, hey, Tigers, like KBO players tend to even be cheaper than the NPB players because the KBO isn't as highly regarded of a league as the NPB. So maybe they could even go in and get uh, like, like get this guy, but play center field. Looks like he's going to stick in the outfield. We've talked about it a lot. The Tigers just don't really have room to bring in another outfielder unless it's like a guaranteed big time power bat that you're just comfortable playing ahead of everybody else. And uh, as much as I think Lee is going to be a really good ball player and I'm excited to see where he ends up, uh, I, I don't think that the Tigers are going to take that quote-unquote risk uh, on a position that they're already so deep at, so deep that they're probably going to end up trading at least one of them. Like That's how kind of plentiful the outfield is right now. So uh, I don't expect the Tigers to be players there, but uh, there's a couple of pitchers as well. We'll keep an eye on them throughout the week, see if uh, maybe there's some interest there around uh, the league and you know if there's any reports on the tigers obviously we will talk about it here all right thanks for making lockdown tigers your first listen every single day shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day we will be back tomorrow breaking down the next day of winter meetings all right peace and love going to therapy's dope i'll catch y'all then baby go tigers